Oh, hi guys. Welcome back to Diamond Dave's Billiards. I've got a couple of shots I want to show you, and I want you to tell me which one you think gets the Diamond Dave stamp of approval. All right, let's have a look. shot B? Well done good sir, leave a comment below and I'll give you a Diamond Dave sticker and while you're down there, if you find this video helpful or entertaining, let me know by playing a power draw shot on that sub and like button. One of the most common problems I see in new and experienced players alike is setting up their cue position too far from the cue ball, and that was the problem with shot A. So let's talk about why this can lead to disaster and some basic fixes for the Golden Gate Bridge Syndrome because it's a long bridge, like the Golden Gate Bridge. Get it? Because they're, they're both bridges and... Bridging too far from the cue ball is a nasty habit that can sneak into your game even when you know it creates problems. And there are players like John Higgins, who have honed their cue actions over decades at the top of the professional snooker circuit, who still have to remind themselves to get a little closer to the cue ball. Players, but I, I'm just trying to get my... my my tip closer to the white at the start of a dress. A lot of us know that setting up too far from the cue ball isn't a great idea, but I think a lot of players don't understand why that is, or why it's so beneficial to set up as close to the cue ball as possible. I'll try to keep this video brief, but one of the reasons I enjoy making very detailed videos about one topic is that I hope people can use that information to diagnose their own game and help themselves improve. I could end this video here by telling you to set up close to the cue ball and be done with it, but instead I'm going to explain the benefits of getting close to the cue ball and the things that can and often do go wrong when you set up too far from the cue ball. First, let's do a quick overview of the setup when we address the cue ball, before we start feathering and getting a feel of the shot. Let's call it the starting position. This isn't a full start to finish video about the stance and cue action. We're just looking at distance from tip to cue ball. And to do that, we need to look at our starting position as shown here. We're going to focus on three things in particular. One, the forearm holding the cue. Two, the exact position of our cue in relation to the table and the cue ball, that is angle as well as distance from the cue ball. Three, and this is not as important as the first two because it can be a natural part of someone's cue action, our elbow. First, let's talk about the forearm and the position of the cue. Please keep in mind that everyone has their own unique cue action, and almost nothing is a hard and fast rule, but we do have some general guidelines to work with. It's usually natural and considered best practice for the forearm to be perpendicular to the table, straight up and down. There's a couple of reasons for this. Think of the arm as a pendulum. It's not a perfect analogy for a cue action because we have three points of movement involved when playing a shot. The wrist and fingers, elbow and shoulder. But the elbow creates the majority of movement and works very much like a pendulum. The lowest point in the swing of a pendulum is at the bottom of its range of motion when its arm is perfectly vertical. It's also the point when the motion of a pendulum has the most kinetic energy. How can this help us when we think about a cue action? First, as this vertical position is the lowest point in the range of motion, it's also the point at which our cue is most horizontal to the table. And a perfect cue action that minimizes error would probably be a perfectly horizontal cue. Second, as the bottom of a pendulum swing is the point at which the pendulum has the most kinetic energy, we can assume this to be roughly true for our cue action. I know, it's not the same. A pendulum's energy is created by gravity and mass, whereas the energy created by our cue action involves these things along with our muscles creating extra kinetic energy. It's a lot more complicated than a pendulum, but there are some other parts of a cue action that contribute to the vertical position being the point at which our cue is moving the fastest, approximately, and we'll talk about these later. For now, the takeaway is this. The vertical position of our forearm is the point at which our cue is most horizontal to the table, and also very close to the point at which our cue is moving the fastest. The third part of the setup is the position of the elbow. 
At the moment, just be aware that the movement of our cue is primarily affected by the pivot of our elbow, but can also be affected by rotation of the shoulder, which changes the position of the elbow. Again, in a perfect cue action, we might want the elbow to stay as motionless as possible in order to minimize potential points of error, but there could be trade-offs involved in this, which, once again, we'll talk about later. Okay, I could go on about this stuff all day, but that's enough information to highlight the importance of what I'm going to say next. Right, listen carefully. This is the most important part of this video. Your starting position is the only point in your cue action when you have 100% control of your cue. One more time, the only point in your cue action when you can guarantee that you have absolute control of your cue is the starting position. You can try to emulate the final backswing with warm-up strokes, but you can't emulate what the cue will do after it goes past the starting position. As soon as you start pulling your cue back, potential points of error are introduced. Your elbow, shoulder, wrist, and fingers all start moving once your cue moves from the starting position. All the hours we spend trying to perfect our cue action are to achieve one thing, to generate a specific amount of kinetic energy in our cue while ensuring our cue is exactly where we want it to be when the tip hits the cue ball and the starting position is exactly where we want the cue to be. We cannot consistently control the amount of power we generate with 100% accuracy. We can't consistently control the motion of the cue during the backswing and delivery with 100% accuracy. The one thing we can do every time with 100% accuracy is put our cue exactly where we want it while everything is stationary in the starting position. Now, it should be pretty obvious where all this is going. If the starting position, which is generally where our cue is most horizontal to the table, and also when our final backswing has roughly the most kinetic energy, is the only part of our cue action we control with 100% certainty, and everything we do to improve our technique is about improving our ability to make our cue be at a particular speed and in a particular position when it hits the cue ball, then surely the best place for our cue to be in the starting position is as close as possible to the cue ball. While we can only do our best to get the cue back to that position when it finally hits the cue ball, we can at least give ourselves the best chance of achieving that by making sure our starting position is right next to the cue ball, at a point that most closely replicates the final point of contact with the cue ball. To put it another way, by taking our warm-up strokes based on our starting position, we can roughly predict where our cue will be when it reaches that point in the final swing, but we can't approximate what the cue will do once it goes past that point. Let's compare these two shots again. You can see that in the first shot, contact with the cue ball occurs at roughly the same point as my starting position. You can see in the second shot that contact with the cue ball occurs when our cue and arm are in a position that we were unable to practice during our pre-shot routine and warm-up strokes. Hopefully, that logic is enough to convince you that shot B at the start of the video is deserving of Double D's stamp of approval, and that our starting position should be as close to the cue ball as possible. But to really drive the point home, let's talk about what can happen if your starting position is too far from the cue ball. More bad things. That's what can happen if your starting position is too far from the cue ball. All sorts of bad things that you can't accurately predict or control because you weren't able to replicate the point of contact with the cue ball in your starting position. Exactly what can go wrong will be different for each person. I'll use myself as an example. Just after my cue goes past its starting point, my backhand makes contact with the side of my chest. This forces the butt of my cue out to the right slightly, and as my cue pivots on my bridge hand, the front of my cue veers to the left. I know that it doesn't happen until my cue goes past its starting position, and I know that my starting position is basically the same as the point I hit the cue ball, so it doesn't really bother me. You can see it happening in this cue point of view. It was difficult to play an accurate shot with the camera blocking my view of the cue ball, but you can see my cue hits roughly the center of the cue ball, then at the end of the action, the front of the cue veers to the left slightly. 
When I play the shot with my starting position away from the cue ball, you can see that by the time my tip hits the cue ball, it has already started veering to the left, and I end up applying unintentional left hand side. The same effect can be seen from above. And from the side, you can see another consequence of my starting position being too far from the cue ball. To compensate for cue ball contact being in front of my starting position, I drop my elbow to get extra distance on my follow through. Once again, this forces my cue into a position that I had not prepared for in my pre-shot routine and could significantly affect the horizontal level of my cue. As a side note, dropping your elbow isn't necessarily negative as long as it's part of your starting position or it happens after contact with the cue ball. One of the best cueists in the world, certainly from the perspective of timing, Ronnie O'Sullivan does exactly this. In fact, he drops his elbow so much during his follow through that his cue often lifts off his bridge hand. John Higgins drops his elbow during his backswing, which contributes to maintaining a level cue, then returns it back to a starting position when he makes contact with the cue ball. And Joe Swale, well, anyway, back on track. Another negative is that, as we mentioned earlier, that vertical starting position of the forearm is roughly similar to a pendulum in that during the final swing, that position is close to the point of maximum acceleration and kinetic energy. Beyond this point, the cue begins to decelerate and as with soccer, golf, tennis and anything that involves timing a swing with a contact point, a period of deceleration is not when we want to be hitting the cue ball. This point of acceleration is not just due to the swing of the forearm, it's also when our wrist reaches its maximum point of acceleration and when our fingers, after loosening up on the backswing, contribute to that acceleration by closing up to bring the cue back to its original starting position. In my opinion, all these factors create what we feel and refer to as timing. That point when everything aligns perfectly when we hit the cue ball. The forearm, wrist and fingers all come together in synchronization to create that perfect moment of acceleration at time of contact. And hitting the cue ball beyond the starting position basically destroys your chances of creating that perfect timing. If you know you have a habit of establishing a starting position too far from the cue ball, hopefully everything I've just shown you convinces you to make some changes. And while there's multiple ways to break the habit, there's one very simple fix you can use the next time you're on a table. To make sure you're as close as possible to the cue ball when you establish your starting position, simply place the tip of your cue at the very base of the cue ball on the line of the shot. Then move your body into your usual stance while keeping your cue as still as possible. Think of it as sliding your body into position or molding yourself around the cue. You should automatically end up in your natural starting position with the tip right up against the cue ball. If you're not used to being this close to the cue ball, you may find yourself feather fouling quite often, that is, brushing the cue ball during your warm-up strokes. Stick with it, you'll eventually adjust and find the perfect position. I've touched on a lot of topics in this video, topics I could spend hours talking about, but hopefully I've shown why establishing a starting position as close to the cue ball as possible not only has multiple benefits, but helps to minimize variables in our cue action. Luckily, it's also one of the easiest problems to fix. As always, thanks for watching. I hope I've helped or entertained you while talking about the game we all love. Until next time, get out there and enjoy playing some pool. Ciao.